I'm Gwendolyn McGrew, and I got next. You next up, and you ain't been on sports like talk. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> hey, you better hit him up. Look, you breaking next, and you up next. Keep the wins on hard. Rock the star on the big scene. Make them know who you are. You don't break a sweat. Don't set up for less. They put you to that test. Your resume that flex. Who got next? Who got next? SLT, ready to go. Who got next? Who got next? Living my dreams and all your goals. Who got next? Who got next? You can ask B. Joker, or head coach. Who got next? Who got next? You next up, go. Oh, here's my vote. Chill. T Nation, what it do, fam? Welcome back to another fire episode of Sports Life Talks. You got next a platform that gives exposure to the voices of tomorrow. That's right, it is 2024, the the year of the Mamba, season four of our amazing show with KT and I. We are still grinding hard. We are going all across this country. We are finding rising stars, super sensations, future phenoms in our communities who are doing. Doing big things and accomplishing big dreams. And today, ladies and gentlemen, I've said this probably a hundred times. When I tell y'all we got a bucket on the show, ladies and gentlemen, we got a true big. I feel like we got the future Chelsea Gray in the building on the phone today, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all make some noise. Shout out to Rich Anderson in Texas. You, we got one of the dopest players in the state of Texas, top fifteen in the state of Texas, representing Pasadena Memorial High, and recently signed the dotted line. And she is committed and going to University of North Texas. Let's make some noise for the 511 guard, the big body guard, the Gemini Project, Gwendolyn McGrew. <laughs> What's up, G Mac? How you doing today? I'm doing good. Look, you look, Kevin. I'm gonna tell you something. Every picture we see of Gwendolyn, she's smiling in every picture. But she is a dog. I'm talking about her, her, her. She is a monster. All right, well, check this out. If this is your first time in Pasadena, hey, Kevin, I don't think we've ever been to Pasadena. You know what I'm saying? We rock with North Texas a bit, but uh, with Pasadena, welcome to the Sports Life Talk Experience. I am your host, the mouth of the South B. Jones. Y'all can read it on the screen. The Louisiana, I'm gonna put your L's up, Mr. Yeet. Is in the building, and I'm rocking alongside my brother from another mother, the other side of the logo, the choir store. Shh. All facts, no cap. The head coach KT. How you feeling today, homeboy? I'm feeling great, B. Jones. The fact that we get a chance to go back to UNT, and yes. when we go to see another game next year, B. Jones, we got a new family that we'll be uh hey, Kevin. Don't, don't, don't spoil too much of it because I, I got a little something I'm going to talk to about. Oh, the I'm sorry. Of people, yeah, but if people can read. They can see it right there. So, I didn't, you know, it's not like a spoiler, but hey, B. Jones, <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling great, man. Let's go. Let's get turned up again. Let's turn it up. Let's turn it up. All right. Well, here we go, Gwen. You know, the first part of the show is uh, the moment of truth. That's right. If you're rocking with us for the first time, we play a game at the beginning of every show, our icebreaker of sorts. And uh, this is our version of two truths and a lie. So the rules are super simple. Gwen is prepared three facts, three statements about her life. Uh, the only catch is that one of those statements is an untruth. Kevin and I, after she gets finished telling us, we'll have together a uh, combined 60 seconds to deliberate work through the options and as a team try to figure if we can un unearth uncover the untruth all right here we go gwen we're ready for you let's get it all right so the first one is i tore both of my knees in high school my second one is i started playing basketball when i was in, when i was five years old and the third one is i got my first offer in the eighth grade Cool, Kevin. So let me tell you something, KT. I know she had a knee injury. I read an article that she had to come back, and that was a big thing. Now, I don't know if she had those knee injuries in she high school. Two. She said she had two. Well, it said, it said knee injuries. So the okay, news was... So we got that one. Got that okay. One. The, the, I saw some pictures of her playing basketball at a very young age, and she was a dog, and she, and she was bigger than all the rest of the kids. I just don't know if she was five years old. So that's she might be trying to chop us up with the with the five years old. But that normally mm -hmm. would get us when they say, "Hey, I started playing when I was five, and she yeah. probably started playing when she was six or four. six or seven. 
Right. Or it could have been four. Uh, but and then the last one is the offer in eighth grade. Uh, she been a dog. She got over a thousand yeah. points. She got over a thousand points in high school. She playing with Texas. You one of the best AAU programs in the city. It's hard. Okay. Now, before we answer it, I know we probably got about 20 seconds. So Gwendolyn, what was your average in middle school? What was your point average? 25. Golly. So that, that didn't help me. Yeah, out she, got off, she got She got off in eighth grade. <laughs> Kevin, I'm gonna go with number two. I don't think she. I think I think she was a little bit older than five. I think she was a little bit older than five. What, what do you say, man? Come on, man. We got ten seconds left. Yeah, let's go with it. Go with that one. Go All right, Gwendolyn, we, we are going to go with that. Uh, you di you didn't start playing basketball at the age of five years old. We're gonna say that that is not the truth. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> we I got really hard on me. Like, really <laughs> here's we the thing, Gwendolyn. A lot of people try to get us with that. I started playing when I was a certain age, so that yeah. one, we kind of go oh. with them. Well, most of the time, we're wrong because they did start playing at a certain age, but we got it right today. Hey, Kevin, I'm gonna be honest with you, though. When she said 25, I said, Yeah, somebody offered her. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody offered an eighth grade at 25 a game. All right, y'all. We're, we're going, we had fun. We got this thing started. So you know what that means. We got the engines revved up. We got the music turned up loud. We need everybody out there. Come on, Gwen. Raise your right hand up. Give us spirit fingers. Come on. There you go. Now we need you to reach over your left shoulder. We need you to grab that seatbelt, pull it down, and buckle up. Click, clack. It is time to go to work. And uh, we are about to pay the bills. The first order of action is to get this thing cranking. We need need everybody out there to join hands and kumbaya. We need y'all to help us to take this show to a whole nother level. And what we need you to do is what we call the SLT Trinity. And the beautiful part about this won't cost you a penny. It's absolutely free. That's right. On the count of three, I'm going to do a lot of hooting and hollering. And I need you to, one, smash that subscribe button and become a part of the Sports Life Talk family. And I promise you, you will have a good time. Number two, we need you to hit that like button as many times as the system and algorithm allow you to. So this show just bubbles all the way up to the top. And number three, last but not least... We need you to share this with all your kid folk, all your play cousins, all your teammates, all your classmates. It don't matter, your church mates, whoever. We need you to send this show to us so we can tell the world how dope this young dog is. I'm telling y'all, GMG is in the building. Hey, Jim and I, is, is, is North Texas, is Pasadena, Pas I, I want Pasadena Memorial to show up and show out on this one. Is Pasadena Memorial going to show us some love on this one? They will, they will. All right, well, you got to say, yeah, I don't know, Gwen. You, 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 you ain't say that with enough conviction for me. <laughs> <laughs> is, 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 are they crunk? Is this, is, this, is this school doing it big out there? Are y'all cold? Um, uh, um. <laughs> ah, well, Pasadena. <laughs> hey, Pasadena. Every time I say that, Kevin, I think of, uh, I think of Dr. Dre. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> in uh, Tupac, California, Pasadena. All right, Pasadena, always up to no good. Hey, Y'all know what to do. On the count of three, let's do it like we true to it. Smash that subscribe button, hit that like button, and share this with your people. One, two, three, boo! Inglewood. Inglewood, always up to no good. Hey, all right, y'all. Y'all know what that means. If you smash that subscribe button, if you did any of those three, we want to welcome you to the Sports Life Talk family. And uh, and Gwendolyn, what's your favorite emoji that you're using right now? If you, When you're sending out messages to your teammates, your, your family members, what, what's your favorite emoji? The red demon emoji. Ooh, that one speaks for itself, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all, all right, we need you to throw the red demon, the red devil emoji up in the chat if you did any of those three things. Cause uh, cause one, Kevin and I, we don't do fans. We don't do we don't do followers. We do family around here. And Kevin, what are we gonna tell them if they throw that red demon in the chat? B Jones, we're gonna tell them with the red demon. That just threw me off. <laughs> thank you. We're gonna tell them thank you. That's right. We want to say thank you in a very special way. And you know what, Kevin? I'm feeling I'm feeling froggy. So you know what? It, it, we're gonna pick one of the red demons on this episode. And we're gonna give away a t-shirt. That's it's just that simple. We're giving away a t-shirt to somebody who throw in the red demon. We're just gonna randomly draw it. All right, Gwen, you ready? You ready, Gemini, for the initiation? You ready to go through this thing? Let's go, KT. Heat up. All right, to initiate you into the SLT family, you got to give us your top five music artists. All right. SZA, Faye Webster, 21 Savage, Raw Wave, and Frank Ocean. 
Hey, I don't know what Frank Ocean. I don't know what he did. Frank Ocean paying these kids to say this because we have got <laughs> six French Oceans in 2024, and I don't know where it came from. All of a sudden, it's just way. Has Frank Ocean dropped some new heat, Gwen? Has he has he dropped a new song, or are y'all just kicking it with the old Frank Ocean? No, I just I just heard it one day and I was like, wow, I like that. I don't even know if it's new, old. You you know. just you like you like that heat though. All right, well, Kevin, she 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 an all American t- talent kind of player. I mean, she I mean, I don't know how you gonna judge this. We went from Twenty One Savage to Frank Ocean. But what you <laughs> what little toxicity was sizzle? So what you gonna give a KT? Well, Gwen and what we like to do, we like to rank everybody's top five, and the highest you can get is five. But I've been really generous in 23 and 24, so I'm not going to stop that generosity now, B. Jones. So let's give her, let's give her 18 for that top five. And I do have a question for you, B. What up, you said, you said in her picture she's always smiling, right? Bro, she got the most innocent smile in the world. I mean, you, you, she on the news, she's smiling. She in the article, she's smiling. She on the court. She hit you with a three. She body you, and then she smile at you. I, I don't know. This young lady is always smiling. So you f- you found out the one picture where she wasn't smiling because she looked like she just straight <laughs> upset on that picture. No, so, no, nah, but that's that's about that action. That I picture, know that I heard. Yeah, I know. I, I'm, I'm messing. With you. I'm talking about it in game day. I'm talking about game face. Gwen is is, is a happy player. She is excited. Yeah, I, I, I need her game face on this episode. B Jones is kind of scaring me right there. All right, so <laughs> who is your favorite superhero and why? Um, I'm going to say Black Panther because (laughs) I just feel like, I don't know. I feel like he changed. Like, it's just, it's Black Panther. Like, how can that not be your favorite superhero? Like, that's just, I just feel like a certain way about that type of superhero, that specific superhero. I don't know. And I'ma tell y'all something. She don't have to, she don't owe you no explanation. She said that's the way she feel about it. That's the way she feel about it. Come on. Give it to her, KT. You look at that picture, you see why. <laughs> Just leave her alone. All right. So since every good superhero needs their own theme music, T'Challa, what would your theme song be? Running by 21 Savage. Mm-hmm. You sing you sing, yeah, 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 you gotta sing that one for us. Sing it. <laughs> yeah, it, whatever you gotta do, spit these bars. Give us that for twenty one. It's just like I'm not. I don't know. It's just like like it just says running repetitively, and then it gets like he said a whole bunch of stuff. It's too much. <laughs> I don't know. I I can't sing it. All right, you, we're gonna give you two more of you to sing. Give her one more, B Jones. Just just give her one more. All right, so we have a running debate on our You Got Next series where I want to be a singer and B. Jones wants to be the dancer. So you got to break the tie for your episode. Would you rather be a singer or would you rather be a dancer? A dancer. Yeah, I'm telling you. <laughs> every, every player that come on here get bucking. I'm not, I'm sorry. Some of y'all come on here, y'all say singing, and I notice it just so happened that the ones that's getting all the buckets is the dancer. It's something about it. I don't know. That's it's not true. We just had an episode not too long ago, and it was a singer. But nice try, B. Jones. For the most part, you're right, but mm, nah. All right. Uh, what is something that basketball has taught you that you can use when you're not on the court? Not on the court. They, you just got to keep pushing. No matter what it is, you got to keep going because you don't know what's on the other side of anything, you know? Yeah, I got you. So, B. Jones and I, we love to travel. When we travel, we got to eat. So, when we come to Pasadena, Texas, what is going to be that one food spot you're going to recommend? And what's your go-to meal there? It's this like it's this Asian place. It's like Poke Bowl. It's not like because I don't eat out a lot, but it's a good like thing. I I get it if I were like to have a basketball game, that's what I would get. So, but I, I think it would be something good to eat. It's Poke Bowl. It's like so it's rice, um, some type of chicken. Some it's just I don't know. I really like it. It's like really good. You can get crab in it. Like it's really good. So if we were to come down there and say, hey, we want the Gwendolyn McGrew pack, <laughs> what is that meal going to be? <laughs> Rice. It's, it's like, it's customized. It's like Subway. 
Yeah, KT. Oh. It's a, they, they have it all out on the thing. I've, I've had it. My daughter loves this, though. It's something something about the teenagers nowadays that they love this poke or pokey or whatever it's called. Yeah. Uh, a poke bowl or whatever. And yeah, KT, it's set up like so. Boys. You get your rice. You can get whatever type of meat you want. You can get your fixings no, and no, all. I, your I, I get that, but I want to know what fixings she get, B. Jones. So I get those same she words. Said everything. She said everything. everything is just so broad. But you know, we're going to move on. I'm just Kevin, gonna get it. Pasadena. It's a famous football player from Pasadena, Texas. Is it Lovey Smith? I don't know. It's somebody no, from Lovey Smith. We already had that. He's from like the Tyler area. Or something yeah, like it's somebody from Pasadena, man. That's a that's a Hall of Famer uh, that well, I believe. If you're watching this episode, put it down in the comments. Yeah. Who's from Pasadena? Yeah. Who, who from Pasadena? I don't know. I'm thinking about Pasadena, California. I think of stuff, so I can't think about Pasadena. <laughs> <laughs> they, they rolling over in their grave about Pope representing Pasadena. <laughs> All right. Today, we have a rising star in the world of high school girls basketball whose dedication, grit, and passion for the game are nothing short of inspiring. Get ready to be motivated and entertained as we explore the triumphs and challenges of this exceptional athlete's journey. Let's jump into the world of high school sports. With that said, B. Jones, go ahead and take it away and tell everybody about our newest play cousin, Miss Gwendolyn McGrew. Gwendolyn Gemini McGrew, welcome to the show. We are super excited about having you on this joint. I, I, I'm gonna tell you, Gwen. I, I, I uh, did you, you have you seen us on the sideline in any of your games before? Have you seen us before? Before at one of your games? No, sir. How's it? I, I know, I know. That's why. That's why, because we we came all the way to Louisville to check out Texas U, and uh, we looked out there on the court, and it was you and Kayana Cox, and it, it was some dogs out there on the court. But I didn't, I didn't know who the young lady with the with the with the mixed hair, the, the signature blonde and black hair was out there. And then I was all of a sudden, you put in some work in in, in Louisville. I was like, okay, she could go. She she you was one of the coldest ones on the team. And then all of a sudden, I'm I'm strolling through my timeline, and uh, it says. 50 point game by Gwendolyn McGrew. I'm like, what in the world? That, that dog, that dog can fetch. I'm telling you, that dog is all over that bone. But Gwen, we go, we go get to all of this and your multiple injuries and how you got to this point and going to UNT. But we got to take him to the beginning. We got to start this thing back because the word on the street is, is that, that you was five years old. No, just mess- <laughs> <laughs> let's take him back to the beginning. Gwen, when did you start playing basketball and when did you fall in love with the game? I started playing basketball in sixth grade, so uh, I think that would be 11. That's yep. when I had this little Pasadena league that I was playing. And now, started, you, say it again? No, what'd you say? You said y'all, you started with what? It was like a Pasadena league, like a little kids league. But And then I started playing AU in seventh grade. Now, w- were you were you always, you know, like a beast like this? Were you always a dog or, or did that just, did that kind of happen over time? I feel like I was always, I feel like I was always a dog. I think it's showing more now, but I was always like this. Like people, like how you said, like you see me smile and everybody would be like, oh, okay. And then you, pl- I would be playing it and be like, oh, like that's not what we expected, you know? Yeah, I, I, when I saw you play, I, I call you Gemini for a reason because you know, not only do you wear you wear the platinum blonde on one side and you wear the, the black to the other side, but your game is one of the most versatile games I've ever seen. Uh, and you you truly have an inside out game. I mean, literally, you can kill them from the three point line, but you can also attack and penetrate because you're so strong and bigger than the rest of these players. You penetrate, you get to the rack, and I mean, it's literally no stopping you once you get going downhill. Uh, I compared you to a Chelsea Gray, but but just Describe your own style and who, who do you think you emulate or who is somebody that you look up to? Somebody I look up to, she's a college basketball player, um, Juju Watkins. I feel like I'm a smaller version of her, obviously, but I just feel like that's who that's who I can compare myself to. Juju, hey, Juju is taking the game over. She she is uh she is on fire. What what part of Juju game that you uh you working on to improve in your own game? everything if, if you look at like she's just really good at everything she does like 50 points 51 points against stanford like come on now like that's they were number one in that conference like I, everything she she just to me she's just really good and she's so calm with it like and then she'll she'll come out of nowhere hit you with a speed burst like everything about her well, speak Juju got her fifty point game, but but you got your fifty point game this year as well. What, what? Tell us what happened that night. How did how did you how did you pull off a fifty bagger? Put a fifty burger on them joints. Did you <laughs> did you did you go to Chick Fil A the next day like Giannis and get you fifty piece uh the nuggets from Chick Fil A? Uh, I'm not a Chick Fil A fan. <laughs> That's not for me. 
I actually think I had pokey that day, honestly. <laughs> I, I think my mom had brought it for me. And then in that, I was we were playing, and I was like, it was it was one of those games. It was like it didn't, it felt weird. Like when I was in when I was in the warm ups, I couldn't hit a shot, and I was like, oh, this is not gonna be one of those. Those gonna be one of those nights where it's like I'm not gonna like go off. And we get in the game after the game. I only I only missed two shots. Dang! So so not only did you get fifty, but you got an efficient fifty. Yeah. Like there was no wasted shots on that fifty. How, how, how did you do from the free throw line? Like did they did they take you to the line a lot? Uh, no, no. It was they didn't foul like they wasn't calling fouls really. It was like I had like I think I shot like six free throws maybe that game. Like, now, when I think of this Houston area, we had Jayla Lewis on. I think of Anaya Lexus. I mean, there's so many amazing stars that's coming from that from that Houston area, um, in, including Gwendolyn McGrew. Or the, I know you on the outskirts of, of Houston, but but my, my question to you is: Do do you feel like that 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 part of the that part of Texas is kind of slept on when it comes to girls basketball? Do you feel like like all of y'all are kind of uh, uh, y'all against the world type mentality when, when it when it comes to the to the southern Texas or the or the southeast Texas uh, basketball. I think I think it I think we are like it's not it's not it's not many of us over here. So it's like you see the kids in Dallas or everywhere else, and it's like it's just like one or two of us over here in each district. Well, so, well you, you you definitely one of the best players I've seen uh, this this whole entire cycle. We we went all around the country this last year, and uh, your game. So when you said when you said you was gonna do the show, I mean we we were like, yes, this is a this is a signature moment for us. And we just had your AAU coach on, Rich Rich Anderson, and he was super excited about you. And uh, so so this is gonna be this is gonna be one that we are gonna look back on in a couple of years and be like, hey, we told y'all she was a dog. But let's go let's run it back about the knee injuries because uh, you. you your first, your first fact about yourself was that you had uh, uh, knee injuries, and I saw, I saw the article. I read an article about the knee injuries. What, what, tell us about that, and how did you overcome the, that that catastrophic injury? So the first one was my freshman year when I was at Dobie. Um, it was our last game. We played Pasadena Memorial at Pasadena Memorial, and I came down. I got a, I got a rebound. Was going to basket. Did a euro step. Turn. I made the. I made the shot. But I turned in my knee, my right knee, I felt it pop and I couldn't get back up. And I was like, oof, like, and I had never experienced that before. So it was like, it didn't feel right. So I had torn my meniscus my freshman year. I was out for a couple months, missed some of AAU, came back. Then I, tr I ended up moving over here to where I'm at and I ended up going to Pasadena Memorial. And then um, the season was over. It was like a after season type of league that we were doing, like to just to make sure we were all in rhythm for next year. And um, I was driving to the basket, and I and I twisted my ankle, and I fell, and three girls fell on top of me. And I felt I felt ex I felt three pops in that. It was my so I ended up tearing my ACL and both my lateral and medial meniscus in my Dang. leg. So now Gwen. We all go through setbacks. We, matter of fact, you know, it's funny because we talk about a superhero and you, we consider you a superhero. Uh, but everybody got a choice to make when that, when that injury happened, right? You could either, you could either cry about it. Uh, you, you, you know what I'm saying? You could, or you could fight back. We, we all got a choice of how we respond, uh, and, and when adversity hits, but your response to adversity is absolutely nuts. Kevin, she was spending 20 hours a week extra. In the gym, five thousand shots a week. Who ca who came up with that workout program, and and what incentivized you and motivated you to push through? I mean, that's absolutely nuts. I know. I mean, my arm was hurting just reading that. <laughs> a five thousand shots. So so who, who who came up with that, and and what motivated you to push through that, Gwen? So who came up with that uh, workout? The all those was my dad. He came up with all those, and he really he pushed me like. It was like he he was the one who got me through this. He was in there the days where I couldn't pick up no weights when I was crying, when I was down, when I was laying on the couch because I couldn't move, I couldn't walk, I couldn't even like it, my leg was dead, like I couldn't do nothing. He was there. He was the one who got me through everything. Well, you got through it, and uh, when I tell you, you came out stronger than ever. Now you are literally unstoppable in, in my opinion once you once you get your body college ready 
Yeah. I don't. I don't. I think you're gonna be. Uh, you're gonna take the world by storm. You're gonna shock a lot of people. Now let's talk about college because uh, we are super fans of UNT. Why? Because we, you know, we had uh, Coach Burton on. He wasn't even at UNT when we had Coach Burton on the show, and uh, and and there's a lot of other players that we've had that represent represent that uh, that organization. And now they, I know that they got Gwendolyn and Mackenzie Bus. Have you have you met Mackenzie Bus and Shanae Price, the, your, your, your teammates that you were coming in with? I've, I've talked to Miss um, Price. I've talked to her before. I know Ken, uh, the other one's coming from a JUCO. My friend plays against her, so I've heard of both of them. Yes, dogs. All three of y'all are just amazing. And then we we see the success that North Texas. I mean, they one of the best teams in the in the conference now. Gwen, did you did you see this greatness in them? Did you see all of this happening when you decided to commit? I did. I trusted in Coach Burden because Coach Burden has been. Uh, trying to recruit me since he was at the other school that y'all talking about and I I believe in what he's doing and I think it's it's working yeah it's working, it's working. they are on fire champion. yep Hey, uh, regular season champion and going and, and raising hell right now in the, in the tournament as well. Uh, how, how did Coach Burton say they're going to use you walking into the door? Are they are they going to get your body right? Are they going to try to work on development? Or what? what or are they going to try to get you on that court as soon as they possibly can? They said as soon as possible. They had told me, he told me that I'm really versatile. And just because my size and how I, how I play my game, he says I'm really versatile. And he thinks that I can really help come in and help win. When did you know your North Texas was the, was home? That visit, I think I knew before, but I think what really secured it was the visit. Like it was, it he made me feel like I was at home, and it, it reminded me, it reminded me of my dad a little bit. Like you know his vibe that he gave. Like that's what it felt. Tell your daddy we got to sit with him during the game because I, I like your dad. Your dad, your <laughs> dad is uh, he sound like he, he sound like he holding things down over there. What's what's your pop's name? Uh, Burke. Burke. Mm-hmm. Burke McGrew. Hey, he sound like hey, like he like he got a little game himself too, man. I heard Burke McGrew was down at the park drop forty the other night, man. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> All right, let's, so 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 we know you drop fifty. Um, but this is the year to Mamba. Do, do you have a Mamba moment in your career, Gwen, that you can think back? Maybe it was that in that gym when you were trying to overcome uh, the adversity of the knee injuries. Can you think back when you became a Mamba, when you finally looked in the mirror and said, oh, I'm, I'm that girl. I'm, I'm her. It was eighth grade. Eighth grade. That's the first time I, I really like saw it and I felt it. We had played, there was, there was a team named Thompson. That was the team that we played. And they hadn't lost a game seventh grade year or coming into eighth grade year. Like, they hadn't lost a game. At, like, and we were like, that was the game where I knew if I beat them, like, I knew who I was. We came in that game. It, it was a home game for us. And it was a, it was so electric in the gym. Like, it, it was, that was my best, my favorite game I've, like, played so far. Like, it was so electric. And, like, my dad was there. My mom was there. My sister, my siblings, everybody was there. I hit a halftime, like, a buzzer beater in halftime. I had got M1, like, three pointers. Like, I was just hitting. We ended up winning by, like, six, I think, or four. And um, and I had, like, 20-something that game. Like, it was so, like, and we had beat them, and nobody had ever beat them. Like, it was like, okay, come on now. You put you put on for the city, huh? You put on for the city. So uh, I, I talked about how you always smiling, and uh, your energy is absolutely infectious. What what is uh, what is seventeen eighteen year old Gwen doing? What is what is Jim and I doing on her day off when when she's just relaxing and not shooting five thousand additional <laughs> shots per week? Sleeping or watching uh, anime, uh, Netflix, whatever, whatever basketball, whatever something. So, so you watching a new Avatar? Speaking of Netflix and, and anime, you watching a new Avatar on Netflix? The 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 human version? Oh yeah, no no, I haven't watched that yet. I'm t- oh, I, you got I, I to the blue the blue Avatar, like those that one. That's my favorite. Like, oh yeah, now that's a that, that's a classic. I mean, uh, the way of the water was good too. You know, they coming out with another one of those. Probably gonna take they them come ten out years. With three more, I think. Oh really? They signed for three more. Oh wow, wow. All right. Well, uh, let's get this thing kicking off. Let's get it go and watch that avatar, y'all. Netflix, send me, send me, send me my royalties. But uh, watch, watch that avatar. <laughs> Gwendolyn McGrew, G Mac.
Welcome to the championship rounds. This is the part of the show with KT and I. We're going to do a little one-on-one ourselves, and you are now officially calling all the shots, all right? So uh, this is our version of Would You Rather. We're going to take that singing and dancing thing, and we're going to amp it up on steroids. What's about to happen is we're going to go three rounds in true championship rounds fashion. In each round, KT and I will both give you an option. We'll make a presentation to you. Whichever one of those options you select, that host will get a point, and the first host to get two points will win this game. Kevin, I don't know why I feel like I won the last game. I'm feeling kind of championish right now. I've been sleeping good. I've been sleeping good. So I'm going to say I won this one, and I'm going to get this thing kicked off. All right, Gwen. You did, though, but we can go ahead. You, you're not sure if I did? I don't know why I felt like I did, man. Who was, was the last like, one? Was it? So late Washington, and she picked Jamaica. It was oh, so yeah. late. Yeah, yeah you, you did. Well. All, right, all right, here we go. So for round number one, Gwen. It is 10 seconds left to go in the game. You at North Texas. You, 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 you playing in conference and you a true freshman, okay? 10 seconds left to go in the game, and y'all are on defense. They point guard bringing the ball down. You deal them up. You meet them at the half court line. You rip the ball from them, steal it, pass it to a McKenzie Buss who's streaking down the, the, the court. She catches the ball, lays it up at the buzzer. Y'all win, and uh, Mean Green is storming the courts off. In your first game, starting at North Texas, your team gets a defensive stop. Coach Burton calls a play for you. You look up at the clock, and with time expiring, you knock down a game-winning three, and you put the conference on notice. Mm. This is tough. I'm gonna go with the first, one, with this, or the second one. Okay. What you go with the shot? You want the shot, or you want the assist and the steal? I want the shot. Oh, I gotta give it. She a killer, though, KT. So I'm gonna go low. <laughs> hey, when when you so efficient, like I'm talking about missing two shots, it's going 50 points. That's absolutely nuts. So yeah, good. Put the ball in her hand. Let's go round two. Would you rather host your own food show? on TikTok, where you get to travel the world interviewing other high school players, college players, getting to know more about them while eating at some of their favorite places to eat in the towns that they grew up in, or... Or, because we got this special class coming into North Texas and all this excitement is surrounded by North Texas, we're going to put a camera crew on you, Mackenzie, and Miss Price, and Shania, Shania Price, and we are going to film a documentary. We're going to film y'all in the classroom, on the bus rides, in the gym, in the locker room, and, and, and even in the apartments. We're going to have we're gonna have a camera crew on y'all documenting this whole experience and how this North Texas team is about to become a, uh, a, a prominent uh, player in the NCAA. And we're going to put it on Netflix, by the way. All on Netflix. The second one. <laughs> Hey, I, you, you, you let me put the extra sauce on that. You could have said second one to, uh, to 30 seconds ago. Good thing she got that one right, because I was over here sweating. Because uh, she she over there with the poke kind of made me nervous. When she said she like, oh, Lord, this girl know how to eat. <laughs> All right, well, here we go for round three, KT and I. We stopped doing the talking, and we let our sneakers do the talking. That's right, we're both sneakerheads. As a matter of fact, if you are a sneakerhead, I want to officially invite you to come hang out with KT and I and the rest of the Sports Life Talk crew on Wednesday nights at 8 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. We stream live from our YouTube, our Twitter, and uh, and all of them. But we would love you to be on YouTube because you can actually comment and connect and re uh, react to some of the things we do live. But with that being said, we sneakerheads are so before the show, we decided to select, select a pair of sneakers out of our collections, okay, Gwen, that we thought represented you. So on the count of three, we're going to get you to say an SLT tradition. We get you to say hold that sneaker, okay? And when you say hold that sneaker, we're going to show you what we thought would impress Jim and I, okay? All right. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Hold that sneaker. You already know I had I had to show Coach Burton some love, man. I had to, I had to show you Coach Burton. I knew Burton you had the green ones. So I had to come out with my version of showing love. I had I had to think about those long flights, them bus rides, stepping off in that in them in them in them uh them, them mean green joggers and sweatsuits. Oof. I'm gonna have to go with the bright green ones. You going with the Kobe's? Yeah, the Kobe's. 
Mackenzie oh! <laughs> McKen- Bus selected the, the, the school shoes. It's all good. <laughs> well, this ain't Mackenzie Bus's show, sir. This is Gwendolyn's show. And I feel like I just dropped 50 on this episode. Hey, I, I, I need Shanae Price to come on this thing so she can uh she she can select the right pass shoes on this joint. And new champion B Jones. So <sighs> Lackluster. Lack. Nah, you okay. You okay. You okay, G Mac. You the truth. This is your show. You do whatever you want to do. All right. Well, Gwendolyn, we talked about how you came back from adversity like a true Black Panther. We talked about how you dropped 50. We've told them your impressive story, but now there's so much that hasn't been written. This is your opportunity to write your own story. The title of the show is You Got Next. What's up next for you? What do you look forward to and what do you see coming along in your future? Obviously, college. I look. I look forward to that. Um, after college, WNBA over or overseas, and studying more of my physical therapy um, route that I'm going. I, I was just about to ask you, what do you plan? What do you plan on majoring in when you get to North Texas? Physical therapy. And uh, Kevin, I like it when they say WNBA. This this is something I'm gonna give you the rare message, Gwen. Speak to your teammates. The, y- y- your day at Pasadena Memorial is gone. Speak to all your teammates and tell them, you know, what you're gonna miss most, and and say your farewells to, to Pasadena Memorial. I'm just gonna miss playing with them. It was obviously challenge challenging. I'm gonna miss the challenges that I've faced with them. And, all right, KT. And me with my family, of course. There it is. Yeah. All right. So, so speaking of family, do you have any shout outs you want to give? I want to thank my shout out to my parents, Coach Foy, Coach Rich, Coach Jordan, Mr. Jernigan, Coach Roke, Coach Hartman, Coach Lopez, Coach Azul, all of my family and girls, Pepper Port, Simeon. That's preparation, KT. You ain't lying. She had that down. She she knocked it out. All right. So this is the part of the show where you get a chance to call the person that you think should have next. Tell me, I got a chance to rock with B. Jones and KT. I told them my story. I want you to do the same thing. But they said, Gwendolyn, who are you uh, calling out? Who should have next? Abigail Flores and Madison McGrew. I think I know we ain't had Madison McGrew, and I don't. I'm not familiar with Abigail Flores. Tell, tell us a little bit about Abigail and, and and your baby sister. Abigail Flores. She's she's a, we she came to the gym one time, and you don't expect she's not even she's a sixth grader. That's the thing. It's the it's the she's a sixth grader. She came in the gym. She came in here. She did a hezzy on. She she she'll do it like she she don't back down at all. She's playing against these tenth graders, big boys. Playing. She plays up in AAU. She's a she's a dog. Abby Abigail Flores is a dog. Uh, all right, Abigail Flores. And what about your little sister? Tell us about Madison. Is she cold like you? She is. In a couple years, you gonna know. You gonna you gonna hear about her. When she, uh, when she sound like she definitely got next So Abigail and Madison Let the world know that you are up next Your ticket just got punched You are now officially on the clock We will be reaching out to you to get you on the show uh, Hopefully this year We're going to make sure we save some spots for you guys But uh, but Gwendolyn McGrew, Gemini, G-Mac You got next You are the truth little sis You are a true superhero You are authentic, you are one of one down to earth charismatic you got an infectious energy and you are just a dog a dominant player on the court i know you're gonna take this game by storm you are extraordinary you are elite you deserve a yeet oh i love this show i love this show shut up shut up man hey how, how you think texas you gonna do this shit now that you now that you're not on the team now that you you're gonna be rooting for them i am they're gonna do amazing yeah they got they got some dogs coming too. They got some great players coming their way. Hey, KT and I want to thank you all for watching another fire episode of Sports Life Talk. You got Ned Gwen. We want to thank you for coming on the stage and, and coming on the show and becoming a part of our family. You are absolutely amazing. We love watching you play. And uh, you gonna you, you know we down the street, right? So if you need anything when you get to the DFW, you better text me. Hey, I need a sandwich. I'm hungry over here. I'm gonna run you. I'm gonna run over there and get you a sandwich, or some, some yard bird or something. You hear me? You don't be up here. We got you back on anything you need in the DFW area. And uh, listen, if you were watching this show and you did not smash that subscribe button at the beginning of this show, well, this is your chance now. 
I'm down on bending knees. Hit that button. Hit that subscribe button and become a part of our family. Like I told you, we don't do fans. We don't do followers. We don't do family. Make sure you smash that like button and share this episode with as many people as you can. Tap in with me and my boy. All right. We are go. We have a, a ton of content at Sports Life Talk on all of our social media platforms. We dropping something every day, whether it's a clip. Whether it's something that's going to be inspirational and motivational. So make sure you uh, tap in with us on our social media pro- uh, pro- uh, profiles or platforms. And if you want to be on the show, I mean, Abigail Flores do sound like she can, like she, <laughs> she the truth, like she's one of the best players in the state of Texas uh, for that age group. And I know, I know she cold because you mentioned it with Malia Mason and Malia Mason cold. But if you got a story out there and if you, uh, if you want to be on the show, we got an open invitation for you. Go to our website, SLT, you got next.com. You can see it on the screen. Tap on the nominations tab and tell us a little bit about yourself and why you think you got next. And we're going to reach out to you and give you an audition to the show. Kevin, you're going to get a crazy. The 469 number gonna call you up. But we're gonna reach out to you and get your and learn a little bit more about you. And if you a podcast junkie like myself, you like literally riding your car and listening to the smooth, sultry sounds and the velvet tones of the mouth of the South B. Jones and the head coach KT, you can do so by downloading this show and all and many more of our 600 You Got Next shows on our uh, on our podcast platform. You can get those wherever you listen to podcasts. So take the show on the road in the in the gym, in the kitchen, in the weight room. It don't matter. You can listen to these uh, these amazing athletes and up and coming stars. All right, Kevin, let's get out of here, man. All right, Gwendolyn, thank you so much for rocking with us. Whatever you need from us, please let us know, and we got your back. Yes, sir. Hey, Gwen, you got to show us that J. You got you got to show you got to show us that jump shot. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I, I need to see that form. I got I got to see. That, that's what you do, Gwen. That's what you be doing. <laughs> It's like <laughs> it looks better if you like see it. I don't know. <laughs> y'all, y'all go to at Gwendolyn two thousand twenty four and uh, check out the highlights. You gonna see everything you need to see. Hey, Sports Life Talk Nation, we love y'all. Stay safe. Be blessed. Respect each other and love one another because together we are better. And keep dreaming big because you never know your story may be the next one featured on Sports Life Talks. You got next. Yeet. I knew you had next because you always working, you always grinding, you're in your bag because you're always working. Like in due time, I just, I knew you got next. Oh, you did it, huh? Crack the code. You got next, you smashing goals. You want next, you need exposure. Well, sports like talk, got the baddest show, like the baddest hut in the room. Podcast is tuning to just for you to talk your shit. Talk your mushroom, you want what you eat and you should consume. Sports like talk from the late night to the afternoon, then rest repeat. Hit the like, leave a comment, or subscribe so you don't miss a beat. You got next, is a small taste of a winning meal from a chef type of celebrity. What's up next is you, at least you better be. Yeah. You got next, yeah. I can feel it, oh. Just like me, you got next, and what comes next? Tune in next time, and you'll see. Cause if you got next, yeah, if you got next, if you got next, then you're just like me. If you got next, if you got next, yeah, if you got next, then you know where to be. I'm talking sports, life, talking this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sports, life, talking this.